Are you here for the trade of the week? Because if you are, you're in the right place. My name is Joshua Bellinger of OptionSizzle.com, and I'm going to show you some unusual option activity today, and I'm going to break it down for you and kind of go with a lateral thesis on looking at that and also aligning different opportunities based off of that. And I'm going to tell you why gold may be an interesting opportunity right now. So stay tuned, and I'll see you on the other side. Okay, so real quick, we're going to talk about unusual option activity. And if you're not familiar with that, I recommend that you go to optionsizzle.com and click on the free report that we have on there. You'll see this page. Just click download now and enter your email and you'll be sent the report for that. So let's take a look here at what I am talking about for this week. Now, today there is some unusual option activity in NGD. If we look here, we have 2,100 contracts of volume with an open interest of eight. So this is clearly new activity going on here. And you see some spillage going on here. So one of the things that you like to do if you track this kind of thing is you want to look at some other strikes. So not really focused too much in any other strikes. What does this tell you? Well, it tells you that in the next 31 days, there is something that these people possibly could be playing for. That's a blueprint. And this is what the activity can provide to you, a context around there. So with options, not only do you have probabilities and statistics that you wrap around it, but you can also look at order flow, which helps put a lot of things together. So I have this little order down here, and I'm going to put this closed because I'm a little ahead. Current IV is 67%. It's pretty elevated here. But overall, this NGD, which is new gold, it's a gold miner, it's trading at $2.24. They're coming in at the two strike, which right now has, I believe they're coming in at 35 cents. We can look at the order flow in a couple seconds here. But this has some intrinsic value. There's not really much else on here because you have a $2 and then $2.50 strike. The volume overall is very low, and this is just context to learn from it. You see November as well, they have some interest in that strike. And you start to go with this and start to think, you know, well, Josh, 2,000 contracts isn't that great. And I would agree with you, but in context of what this average daily volume is for New Gold or NGD, well, it's a little bit different. You know, and maybe someone is playing for a bullish bet. It doesn't mean it's a lot of money going behind it, but yeah, it's, it starts to create an interesting process for trades. Now, with high implied volatility, I'd look on the other side here and I'd say, well, is there a put I could sell? No, there's no volume there. So you're kind of stuck in this position. And you can look at you know, something like the two strike here as well, but you're just not getting too much. I mean, yeah, return on capital, if you sold a put here, if you could get filled at 10 cents, yeah, I mean, you're 24 cents away, you take in 10 cents, I mean, 10% return in the next 59 days, eh, okay, still, it's still not that great. So anyways, what can else, or what else can we look at? Well, real quickly here, let's take a look at the option statistics, and you see that 3,000 calls were traded today, and 80% of them were between the market, but uh, they actually traded on the offer there, so they're marked a little bit differently, and we can look at the time and sales here, and the biggest trade here was, again, in those August 2s, and they actually traded at 40 cents, so it was 30 by 40, so it's clearly on the offer here, and implied volatility did tick up. So what does that tell you? Well, on a widespread like that, 10 cents, and it's this is big slippage here, 30 by 40, means they're coming in an offer. It means they, they are not really worried about price. They just want to fill, and that's what that could mean. Uh, most likely, that's what, that's what you interpret it as. So anyways, what else? Well, let's go look at some of the other alignings with this. One of them is a ETF called GDX. It's called the Gold Miners ETF. And you start looking at this, and we'll start looking at some opportunities with this. So maybe, maybe NGD is not what I want. So I wouldn't really go after the calls there. What I would do is I would start to look at things that are parallel with that. So if that's a gold miner, what could possibly go with that? Well, gold in general has been getting hammered lately. Uh, gold miners have not done too well as well. So let's take a look here at NGD. Uh, uh, if, if I'm bullish on this, I'm not going with that option. I'd rather just buy the stock and play it that way. $2 stock, I mean, that's just, it, to me, that's a, it, 
I, I would rather go with the pure purest bet than kind of a leverage bet like that, especially with implied volatility at those levels, meaning that you buy that option, implied volatility starts to drop. It's just not really that benefit. Something like that you have to look at just the stock. So I'm not really too interested in NGD stock. What else can we look at? Well, let's take a look at some of the other uh, kind of parallels. Take a look here at GDX, the gold miner ETF. It's a $14 ETF. Yeah, I mean, on the bottom here, I see average implied ticking up a little bit. It's fallen off a cliff from 14 or from 16 to 14. Okay, you know, let's let's take a look at that. Now, I'll look at GLD, gold. Obviously, gold miners and gold are going to go hand in hand. Let's take a look at gold. Gold the last few days have fallen off as well. A big spike in implied volatility, a large uh, look like two days ago, just a on the future side of it, just, pe just someone dumping the futures or a dumping a position, I mean. So right now we have gold at these levels and whatever you want to say, yada, yada. I mean, I guess when I'm looking at this right now, you can make a big case for this, uh, you know, technical formation. Whoops, the head and shoulders. Hey, whatever, whatever you want to do and put around it, that's fine. It's all about opportunity. So let's go back to the trade tab here. So when I look at GDX, okay, I'm like, okay, well, NGD is probably good. And I could probably do a little bit more research by looking at that ETF and looking at the holdings. But I'm just going through this real quickly. And just, again, you have to find opportunities and you want to just kind of look at some different things to compare and see what's the best one. And that's what I'm doing here. GDX, I'm looking at this one. And with 31 days, I'm looking at the monthly expiration. Why 31 days? Time value. Time value plays an important role. 31 days is not the ideal, but I don't have anything else except for 59 days. And if I look in August weeklies, the liquidity is not there. And that's important as well because that's what I'm going to talk about right now. We have volume in this 14 strike. And what I would be looking for, if you're really that bullish on it, yeah, you could sell this 14 strike with 31 days. And your return on capital, if it does expire, worthless is 24%. Yeah, okay. Well, commodities are very volatile, and it comes with experience on knowing that. They trade differently than equities and so forth. So, you know, I don't really want to get that aggressive. So when I look at lower strikes, it's really just not too much there. So where do I have to go? I have to look at GLD. And I actually went the other direction with this, uh, with looking at GLD first and then GDX. But the difference between GLD and GDX is the cost. When you sell a put on a $14 underlying, the margin's a lot less than what it's going to be on 105. So that's the reason why I looked at GDX. So, okay, let's take a look here. 31 days, we're in the monthly. And let's take a look here at the priced in one standard deviation move. It's $5. And I'm looking at this right here, 4.79. I just rounded up to five. That's what the implied volatility on all these options are indicating. So what do we have here? Prices are at 105. Right now, the one standard deviation is going to put it right here at 100 and or 110 in the next 31 days. That puts context that there's a 68% probability of that working. And you can look here at the delta, that's a trader hack, or probability of out of the money. That means it's an 80% probability that this expires out of the money. This is real numbers, real context. And it's real, you know, right now, we could see tomorrow where uh, the GC futures dump and you know, things change in the marketplace, but as of right now, that's what we're looking at when we place and put risk on. If we do sell this put naked, we do have a return on capital of 4.22%. 31 days, 4%. Hey, I mean, it is what it is. Um, and that's what uh, you, you kind of have to take it with. And that's that's using kind of that information of something bullish going on with unusual option activity in that specific name and kind of looking at some other opportunities as well, where if we look here at the implied volatility of these options, the current IV on this one is 55%. And the reason why I, I didn't go with the GDX or looked at the GDX is because implied volatility on this is only 30%. So we have a higher IV rank compared to the miners than we do with just the, the GLD ETF. So looking at this, we have some decent liquidity. Things are relatively decent here. I mean, the spreads on this one is 60. So we have a two cent difference on here, which is ideal. You have 66 cents, you can get a fill. So that's really ideal for this. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna walk through kind of the analyze tab here. 
So what I did is I already have this loaded up selling one August monthly put and uh, we'll just do 66 cents. So I have on my slices here, which are just kind of the probabilities. And we go out to the August 31 days here with $2 up, $5 up, and then $2 down and $5 down, which you can see here, you could start to understand this position. What happens if prices go higher, you can see how our Delta changes. And if they go lower, you can see how the Delta changes as well. How gamma works, how theta works, how vega works. And this is as if it happened right now. So if the market opened tomorrow and it moved $5 this way or $5 this in the opposite way, this is kind of how it will look. So as we look out at 31 days here, you could see again where those probabilities come into play. 20% 20, 20 probability. So it's an 80% probability of expiring worthless. Below 100 as well, you have, you have that probability, that one standard deviation. You can start to work up from there, and you can start to get real context and real probabilities of what can happen during this position, during the time of this position, the next 31 days. So think about this as a game. You know, a game of football is four quarters, and changes in the lead may happen multiple times, and even a team may get down 14 points or 21 points. Okay, that's fine during the course of a game. Yeah, you're in the you're watching as a fan and you're not too happy about it. But the only thing that matters at the end of the game is who wins the game with the most points. The same thing is it, it goes on with trading or investing or uh, anything. Investing, trading, whatever you want to have it as. It's the same aspect. Whatever happens in the next 31 days between this position happens. But what matters is that the statistic, the probability on this says that 80, there's an 80% probability that this is going to expire above 100. And if it does, it's a low probability, which could happen. However, we at least have context around that to go from it. So if we look here at the, uh, I wanted to look at the little funnel here, but uh, I'm not seeing it there, the risk profile. Yeah, there we go. The risk profile. So anyways, this is how the position looks like. Uh, if it goes to 100 and above, you collect the premium and that's that. If it goes below, that's where your risk is at as well. So if you wanted to get long gold and you like gold and you know this is your opportunity to take advantage of high implied volatility and also get long and, and get long into a move in your direction. So it was a little, down a little bit today. Uh, but that's what you would be looking for on this. And if the opposite end of that is, well, I just want to take advantage of the high implied volatility, that's what you would look for as well. Now, in a position like this, if you had sold this, ideally, you want to take your profit at 30%. You're not looking to take in that 66 cents in complete, uh, in complete premium. What you would want to be able to do is within the next two weeks or the next week, if prices moved in, uh, the opposite direction, higher, that you would want to close this down at least 30, at 30, 30, 33 cents is ideal. You know, 30, 33 cents, you have an order in, and that's where you would want to take it out. What happens if it goes against you? Well, premiums are going to get built up. What would happen is that this would go higher. Well, you take advantage of that, and then you you roll this position next next cycle. So you get some more duration, take advantage of premium, and you can kind of work from there. So that is the really the whole context of using something like that unusual option activity, not being too excited about it. Those could work out. However, we want to look at high probability outcomes, you know, opportunities that are going to benefit us, not uh, something where you're playing a $2 stock where you can if you want. But again, it's about making money and you want to focus on the better opportunities. And to me, this would be more of a better opportunity than trying to chase some NGD call activity, but using that to build a thesis and kind of take us into, well, you know, maybe this is reason why gold is a little bit more better of an opportunity. You have the high implied volatility. You have some unusual option activity and some gold mining, which would only benefit if gold holds its prices or lifts higher, yada, yada, yada. And that's where you come up with opportunities and that's my thought process. So next week, make sure you are subscribed to the channel and also part of the email so I can send you out some more opportunities like this, share some unusual option activity and all that good stuff. Take care.
And if you have any questions, let me know.